Okay, this diagram shows you the electrodes that we use in our ERP lab. So we have a bipolar vertical oculogram and a bipolar horizontal oculogram using those electrodes and these electrodes hang down in wires from the cap. The rest of our electrodes are part of the standard 1020 system, 29 electrodes, and you can see where they plug into the amplifier and you'll learn more about this equipment later in this video. This is one of our caps, and so the electrode montage that we use. Here are all the electrodes that we're using. Uh, so we record from the front of poles here. This electrode right here is arbitrarily designated as the ground by the uh, cap manufacturer. So you'll fill that and work that one first. Then we have a row here in the frontal region, including like FZ, F3, etc. Then we have the FCZ electrode row, the CZ, the CPZ, and then a PZ electrode row in the back. And we have these three, let me get the camera so you can see it. We have these three electrodes in the back, but we don't use OZ. We don't, so if it's like this cap, it's in it, you don't have to fill it, you don't have to work it. We just do O1 and O2 because that is our full montage. This image from your lab manual shows you the EEG recording computer. So this is the computer that records the EEG that's coming from the amplifiers. It's all the way to the left on the uh, desk. Next to it is the stimulus computer. The stimulus computer will show stimuli. So it'll show pictures, words, whatever is part of the uh, research study. And it also sends event codes to the amplifier um, so we know when particular events were presented on the screen. I'll show you how that works next. So the parallel port of the stimulus computer is connected to this gray cable that runs into the testing room. So this is our amplifier and at the bottom if you see the gray cable that comes from the parallel port of the stimulus computer and it connects to this white box down here and sends the event codes into the amplifier so as the amplifier is recording EEG it can also receive the event codes from our stimulus computer. The electrodes plug in this cable right there and each of the cables goes to one of the electrodes and the electrodes are plugged into a particular place and you can find that on the wall or in the lab manual. Okay, this is some sample data and I've already done a lot of processing on the data. So it's been down sampled to 256 hertz, it's been filtered, uh, and it's been epoched, meaning we pull out the individual trials. And so the reason I'm showing you this is so you can see the event code stamped into the file. So this is when the trial began with a particular item, it was an old item and uh, you can see the response here. The response here is coded with uh, a number 51, and then the confidence would also appear as well, but it probably got chopped off of this particular trial because it happens after a 500 millisecond delay or so. And so you can see all of the event codes. You see the next event codes here is a 52, and we can scroll through the data, and you can see that there's different trial types all stamped into the file, and those event codes come in from the amplifier, as I showed you from uh, the stimulus computer, they get marked into our data set. The other thing I want to show you uh, about this is you'll see that we got a little bit of electrode drift here on our uh, looks like either our, our horizontal or a vertical electro oculogram. That happens. Uh, one thing that can help with that is filtering can help with that. And also I have found that um, filling the electrodes before you finish the prep is really good at guarding against electrode drift. We had a period where we had many electrode drift problems and I found out the students weren't refilling the electrodes. They were waiting till the end, they would forget, and the gel sort of settles and then you start to have electro, electrode drift, drift problems. So it's a really good uh, practice to fill the electrodes once you've got the impedance to an acceptable level. Go ahead and fill it, uh, otherwise you might forget to fill it. Okay, I wanna quickly review how we determine noise in our data set in the ERP lab. So when we process data, first thing we're going to do is ICA to remove ocular artifacts. Then we have three 
artifact detection algorithms that we use in ERP lab. We use a moving window, a step function, and then we have a function that looks for a flat lining or where the signal moves out of range uh, and the signal gets clipped off. And so after we run those three routines, we'll look at the number of trials that are essentially each routine will reject trials that meet certain criteria. So if you're rejecting a lot of trials, that means you had pretty noisy data. So let me show you, and we save that, we save the number of trials that, it, that make survive those artifact detection algorithms, and we save it in this file. We usually call it uh, like subject number and then flags.txt. And so let me open this one up so you can see. You can see in this particular case, we had 37 trials, which was 100% of the trials that were available. None were rejected in this column. And overall, only four trials were rejected, four out of 340 six trials were um, rejected. So a very low percentage were artifact trials. You can see F2 houses the number of trials that were rejected for the moving window algorithm. F3 is for the step function and F4 is for the blocking and flat line function. So if you have data where you have a lot of these trials are rejected, that means that it's pretty noisy or was a noisy session.